Hello everyone, this is Goody, K3NG. In this video I'm going to show you how to use debugging functionality in the K3NG Arduino rotator controller. Uh, we have the Arduino IDE serial monitor uh, up on the screen here, and by default the rotator controller has a periodic uh, debug logging function built in automatically without having to do anything special. Uh, with the configuration files. The command for that is backslash D. And you'll see here that every three seconds a diagnostic log comes out. And uh, this can tell you a lot about the rotator, how it's configured, what's going on. This tells you the date and the uh, time that the log was produced. This is the software version. If you're equipped uh, with GPS, it'll tell you if uh, you're in, uh, your clock's in sync with GPS or if it's free running. Uh, if you don't have the clock functionality compiled in, you won't see anything here. This is telling us that we're using the Yaesu uh, GS232A protocol and uh, I've got uh, parking functionality compiled in and it's just telling us that it's not parked. Uh, this this rotator controller is set up for azimuth and elevation. Uh, right now there's no rotation going on, it's idle, and there are no commands in queue. Uh, here's the current reading for azimuth, uh, current reading for elevation. Uh, this is raw azimuth. This is the azimuth that can go above 450 degrees. It's basically a continuous um, uh, value uh, across the entire azimuth uh, rotation capability. It's how we deal with overlap, uh, rotators that can go uh, beyond uh, rotating 360 degrees or multiple times um, around. Uh, the raw azimuth is uh, converted into a quote-unquote real azimuth. That azimuth will always be between 0 and uh, 359 degrees. Uh, this particular rotator controller that we're looking at uh, is using um, potentiometers for um, azimuth and elevation sensing. So here, we're, this is the, the analog value that the Arduino is reading directly off of the, uh, the analog pin. This is the range of the potentiometer. Uh, it starts with 60 at the value of 64 and ends at 968. Um, zero degree starting point. Uh, it's set up for 360 degrees of rotation. So basically, this zero corresponds with six, the value of 64, the analog read value 360. That corresponds with 968, or 986, rather. Um, this shows you uh, what I mentioned before about the raw azimuth value over here. Because this is a 360 degree unit, uh, the raw azimuth corresponds directly with the real azimuth. If this was a rotator that had, say, 90 degrees of overlap, you might see this read 0 to 450. Or if it was a starting point of 180, um, you'd see this 0 here would be a 180. And the, the uh, other value uh, would be 180 plus 450. Um, this is asthma speed control. I'm not using it in this particular unit, but right now uh, current asthma speed is almost maximum 253, maximum value is 255. Um, and if you're doing um, azimuth correction, like a manual, uh, a manual correction, you'll see that here. It's called an offset. Um, elevation. Uh, we don't do anything with uh, a raw elevation. There's no need to because elevation will go from 0 to 180 or 0 to 90. There's no concept of overlap with, with elevation, so we don't have a need to have a, a raw and a real variable. Um, just like with the azimuth here, we have uh, the reading coming directly off the analog pin on the Arduino, and we have the range of that value. So uh, zero degrees elevation would be uh, correspond with a value of 92. 180 degrees elevation would uh, correspond with an analog read value of 1019. Uh, these are relating to speed control, what it normally is, what the current value is. And again, if there's a, a calibration offset, that is uh, set right here, or it will be displayed right there. 
This particular unit's equipped with GPS, so you'll see some values here for um, for the satellite, how many satellites we can see right now, what's my latitude, longitude, um, altitude, how old the uh, the fix, the satellite fix is, so it's uh, half a second old, how many uh, data characters we have received from the GPS module, how many of those sentences were good, and how many of them uh, fail to check some. So that's that's the basic periodic debug logging. Like I said, this can tell you quite a bit about what's going on um, with the unit. There's also the ability to activate um, other debug logs that you normally would not have activated in a production unit. But if you're trying to troubleshoot something, uh, these are really useful. And a lot of times when you ask for support on the Radio Artisan Group, uh, myself or others may ask you to go in and uh, activate uh, debugging logs, uh, recompile, upload it to your Arduino, and perform certain actions and post the uh, the logs so we can see what's going on. Uh, so over here in the Arduino IDE, uh, you can see the file that uh, you would modify to set that up, and that that particular file is rotator debug log activation .h. You'll see you'll see multiple debug options. Uh, debug dump is uh, that that's the periodic uh, log that I just showed you a minute ago that is on by default I recommend keeping that on unless you're trying to save memory like if you're trying to use uh, an Arduino Uno or a Nano and you want to implement um, additional functionality like an LCD display you may want to disable debug dump but otherwise we leave that compiled in because that is pretty useful Perhaps a good one here to uh, demonstrate would be debug submit request. And you just remove the, uh, the double slashes there. Go ahead and compile and upload to your unit. And back at the serial monitor. Oops. And we'll see that uh, we're up again here. And uh, I'll just go ahead and invoke rotation, and you'll see uh, things being queued. Uh, there I hit the uh, rotate counterclockwise button, and I let it go. And uh, you'll see right here, uh, request counterclockwise. That's requesting counterclockwise rotation in the queue. And you'll see here, actually, a corresponding uh, event here in the, uh, the debug log. You'll see that azimuth, normal, CCW rotation. And when I let go of the button, there's a request stop. So that stops the rotation. And you'll see here azimuth went back to, uh, to idle. Do an up command. And I forgot to enable debugging again. Let me just do a stop. There you'll see the uh, the stop request. Let me do an uh, azimuth, uh, or I'm sorry, a, a rotate up command. And there is a request up. Stop. And I'll stop uh, periodic debug logging. So some of these debug logs might seem a bit cryptic, but the, the basic format here is... Uh, in the beginning, you'll see the function. This is the function within the code uh, where this log is coming from. So this lets anyone looking at the log see, oh yeah, submit request. I can go to that function within the code, find um, find the message that uh, where, where that debug log is being generated and understand what this thing's really saying. Um, this particular log I know well because th this one's that we use is one that we use often when there's there's issues. Um, we can see what's actually getting submitted to the uh, the request queue, and it's going to be um, executed by the rotator controller. This particular one, submit request, really it tells you what what the uh, the, the the system has been asked to do, um, whether that's been by a user action, um, pressing a button, or via the control port, or um, perhaps if you're using the uh, the, uh, the master slave functionality, what the uh, the slave unit's been asked to do. So um, very useful in troubleshooting. 
you can you can activate multiple debug options. Just be aware each one consumes a, a, a certain amount of memory uh, because there's a lot of uh, strings that are sent out the, uh, the serial port and that needs to be in the code. So um, really recommend you turning off uh, debug options after you're done troubleshooting your unit, upload the code, and really only operate with debug dump um, activated. And uh, actually it can be detrimental if you leave these on. And let's say you're controlling your, um, your rotator controller with a logging program or a contest program. If these debug messages are being um, issued on the serial port while your computer program is controlling your, um, your Arduino rotator controller, um, the logging program's not going to know what to do with those debug messages that are is coming at it. Ho hopefully the program's written so that it will just gracefully discard those messages, but um, uh, programs that don't have those uh, fail-safes in may lock up, they may crash, there may be you know unintended consequences by having those debug messages uh, being issued on the serial port. So uh, again, highly recommend turning those uh, these extra debug messages off. Uh, so that's it. I hope this helps. And um, as always, if you need help with uh, your rotator controller, don't hesitate to go on the Radio Artisan uh, Group's I.O. list and uh, request help, and uh, we'll get you going. Thank you.